Like other data in Python, lists are objects. Remember that objects have two important characteristics. Objects know things about themselves. We call that the state of the object or the value of the object. And objects can perform methods. They can do things. Those methods, in the case of the list, are defined to allow lists to have certain functionality that programmers might find useful. So what we want to do is investigate the kinds of methods that lists can provide to us. So let's start off with just creating a simple list. Let's include the integer 2 and the integer 5 and perhaps another occurrence of the integer 2, the string cat, the boolean false, and maybe yet another occurrence of the integer 2. Remember that lists are sequences, lists are mutable, and lists can consist of any kind of Python data, so we call them heterogeneous. So in this case, we have integers, strings, and booleans all mixed together. So what are some simple kinds of methods that we can use with lists? Well, perhaps the first one we could look at is a method called count. We can ask the list to count the number of occurrences of the value 5. When I do that, it returns 1. There is one occurrence of the value 5 in this list. Likewise, if I ask the list to count the number of times 2 occurs, it returns 3 because there are three different occurrences of the value 2. So let's just recall for a second here that the way we talk about a method is we ask the object to perform the method by using this dot notation. We are asking the mylist object dot to perform the count method and then we have to provide the information the method needs. In this case we need to provide the item. Notice that it's perfectly fine to ask to count the number of times an item appears. If that item is not in the list, we'll simply get the value 0 being returned. Another thing that we can do is we can ask a list to provide us with the index or the position of a particular value. So for example here we say, what is the index of the item cat? Well remember that in my list, cat is at position 3. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have six items positioned from 0 to 5. Cat is in position 3. And so the index of the value cat is 3. However, if we ask for the index of the value 2, now we have a potential problem because there are three occurrences of 2. But notice that the result is 0. Why? Because 0 is the position of the first occurrence of the item 2 as we go from left to right. And so the index method returns the index of the first occurrence of an item. Count will count the number of times an item occurs. But likewise with count, if we try to use something that is not in the list. So if we say mylist.index, where is the value dog? In this case now, we get a runtime error. Because dog is not in the list, the Python shell returns that an error occurs, whereas remember with count, we actually get the value 0, which makes sense. The next things we might want to do are to manipulate the list by adding new values. And so the first thing that we might want to talk about here is the append method. If we ask a list to append something, we're saying, I want to add it to the end of the list. So if I add the string dog to the end of the list, now my list contains seven items. And dog has now been added as the last one. The append method does exactly what it says. Ask the list to add an item to its end. In this case, dog now becomes the last item in the list. It's important to realize that the append method does not return anything. The append method did not return the new list, but rather it modified or mutated the existing list. And so in order to see the result, I had to actually evaluate the list to be able to see the values now had changed. When I performed the append method, nothing was returned. Let's do it again just to make sure we see that. Append the value 65 to the list, nothing gets returned, and yet my list has now been modified so that 65 is the new last element. 
So the append method is what we call a mutator method. It modifies the list, but it doesn't return anything. If we wanted to add an item someplace other than at the end of the list, we could use the insert method. The insert method requires two parameters, two pieces of information. The first is the position where we want the item to go, and the second is the value that we want to insert at that position. So what this says is insert at position 2 the string apple. Well when I execute that, again notice that it modified the list, it didn't return anything, but if I look at the contents of the list, now apple is at position 2. Now whatever was at position 2 previously has now been moved to be at position 3, 4, 5, and so on. So basically what it did is it inserted Apple at position 2 and slid everything else down one place. We've added one more item. Our list now has one more item. If I wanted to do the same thing and add an item at the very beginning of the list, I would simply add by inserting at position 0. So if I add the integer 999 at position 0, now my list has the value 990 showing up as the first item. What if I wanted to add something to the end? What if I wanted to use insert to do the same thing that a pen does? Well in that case I would have to add something to be the final item, but that means it would have to have a position that was one greater than the length. But remember that the length is already one greater because length is the number of items but the positions start counting at zero. And so in this particular case where we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten items in my list, the positions are zero through nine. And so if I ask my list to insert a value at position ten, and let's insert now the word banana, then when I look at my list, in fact, banana now has become the last item. And I could generalize that by saying my list dot insert not at a fixed position, but rather let's use the length of my list as sort of a generic way to say the end or the the final position or the next position available. And let's add the value 765. And now when I look at my list, 765 is in fact the last item.